this, by the way. So when it goes live, good morning, I can share. everyone. Welcome to this week's episode <laughs> of Java with Jen and Jess. I am Jennifer Fernandez, Realtor and Branch Manager for the Property Pros Tampa office. And I am Jessica Sherrill, Senior Loan Officer with Freedom Mortgage. This morning we are flipping the script on you guys. Normally we are the ones putting somebody else in the hot seat. Uh, but this week we've decided to put ourselves in the hot seat. And we have somebody who is amazing that is actually going to be doing uh, the interview on us. Yes, we cannot wait. So introducing the most amazing Ted Boger, who has honestly amazing most incredible social media show on facebook it's the ted I cannot believe that i get to be interviewed by the ted bogert <laughs> business development manager at freedom and such a great friend as well he has a social media show that showcases all of the leaders and movers and shakers and the do-gooders in the community Welcome, Ted Bogert. So excited to be here. I'm so Welcome, excited Ted. to be here. Thank you. Thank you both for having <laughs> me. I love, hey, Lori, I love um, I love live. I love that you guys do this every Friday. I think it's awesome. I think um, it's great to go out on social media and you guys make it look easy. So thanks for having me. So, hey, guys, everybody's saying hi. I want to say hi back. Um, tell, so I'm going to go ahead and ask, kind of take over, if that's yes. okay. It's like a, it's like a crossover takeover. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, my seatbelt on and get ready. Get ready. So uh, we, on my show, we love to origin story. And I think it would be really cool if we could get to know you two more. Uh, not just from a business perspective, because we both know you're incredible uh, entrepreneurs and business women. And it, that's already showcased, but we want to know the why and how you got here and maybe a little bit more detail. So I'm going to start with Jen, since it is welcome to Java with Jen and Jess. It's alphabetical too, right? Is that why? <laughs> uh, so hey, Jen, so tell us a little bit about you. Uh, tell the audience, you know, we'd like to know where you're from. And then obviously neither of you were born and had a real estate Barbie. So uh, like I didn't have a mortgage GI Joe. Uh, what, what was your beginning like and how did you get to where you're at? Yeah. So born and raised in Tampa um, from a, as soon as I was allowed to start working 15, I did. First job was Annie Ann's pretzels and Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that sounds like a mall job. I definitely contribute my customer service skills to Chick Fil A, but <laughs> um, started. I mean, you know, through high school, I always tried to have two and three jobs. Why I don't know. It was just instilled in me. Um, both of my parents came from. You know, they did not have nine to five jobs. They both were business owners, entrepreneurs, always, always on to something else. Um, so I kind of grew up like that. Um, I got into accounting accidentally, absolutely hated it. Um, absolutely hated it. Maybe that's why I can calculate a 3% commission so well now, but anyway, um, I accounting. So I got into family business with my mom, did that for several years and decided, I mean, real estate was always something that I loved to watch. I was always intrigued in real estate. I was, you know, I, helping somebody achieve the American dream was always something that I just, uh, just just wanted to do and never really knew how to get started or where. And then one day it just literally kind of fell into my lap. I'm like, well, let's, let's take the test. Let's do this. And again, I can do this part time and have still have the, the, uh, the family business and get back to my, you know, 16 year old and having two and three jobs. Um, so I did went out, and then once I got a taste of it, I said, this is all that I want to do. I, I love it. That first closing, that handing over the keys for that first time. And my first client ever was a young guy, um, bought a condo in, in Channel Side. And it was just like, I, I did that. I helped him do that. And within six months, I was full-time real estate. Isn't that amazing how you cut, a lot of people do tell me that they sort of fall into it or it's mm -hmm. kind of an afterthought. Well, I guess I'll try real estate. And then there's some, there's some of the most successful people in the business. And it's mm -hmm. so funny how it just falls. Well, I, I, I was blessed. I, I 
when I like, first first got licensed, I was approached by a, a veteran in the game, if you will, and she kind of wanted to start a team. And I was like, what's a team? I mean, that sounds fun. Like, let's go play. Sure. So little did I know she reached out to me because she was going on a two week cruise around the world and needed somebody to deal with her clients and, and maintain her pipeline. Well, when she came back, I had six contacts um, under my belt. And so needless to say, she kept me around. <laughs> and then it was just uphill from there. So I'm going to ask Jess the same question. So give us some origins and background on you, Jessica, um, and how you got to your journey as the mortgage guru loan person that you are today. Um, well, before I start into what I, uh, my history, four score and seven years ago, um, <laughs> the story, Jen is, Jen is amazing. And to hear her come from like, absolutely like, you know, where she's working at the, the auntie and or the pretzel place, whatever you, you know, and then be able to, to be where you are. And she's so amazing with clients. So that's awesome. Um, Don't make me ruin my lashes, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> um, my stint actually started in 1999. Um, I had a four year old baby girl and a two month old baby girl. And I was looking through some classifieds one evening. Uh, uh, anyone that's under 30, I uh, probably don't know what that is, but it's <laughs> called a newspaper. Uh, and I was looking for a, a, like a better job, you know? Um, and I found this, uh, this little square in the middle of the paper and it said, loan officers will train. And I'm like, wow, I'm trainable. That's cool. I have no idea what this means. Um, and they hired me and, uh, you know, that's where I learned the business. I had no idea what a mortgage was, what interest rates meant and, um, learned the business, you know, throughout and, um, kind of did everything, but an underwriter position I would, you know, I've done everything, but clean the bathrooms pretty much. And, and uh, you know, went through uh, the mortgage evolvement, uh, got out during the crash, went into banking and finance. I uh, worked for Chase for several years and did very well there. And then I got recruited back into the business by two of my ex-bosses, actually. And uh, they said, no, 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 you have to get back in. And I was like, you're crazy. I'm not doing this. This is crazy. I'm so I was so traumatized. And then I just three months later took the test. Here I am five and a half years later and I love it. So you both have, it sounds like you sort of stumbled into it then too. I mean, it wasn't something that you had set out to do. Nobody grows up and says, I want to be a loan officer. Let me it's, just say that. Right. Okay? I, I no think it's that. funny because it's such a, a real estate and is such one of the most pure entrepreneurial kind of businesses. So anything that touches real estate, mortgage, to uh and yet we don't teach about it really i mean there are degrees now for real estate not when i went to school uh but that if it feels like a lot of people of course it's not your first second or third thought unless you've right. been around people who do it and you realize the freedom it gives uh the monetary op monetary opportunities mm -hmm. it gives and so yeah it's just funny because every there's very few people i've met or talk to that say, I wanted to be a realtor or a loan officer from the very beginning. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so it's such, but it's such a cool thing. All right. So I want to ask about your whys though. So you get in and you know, the business is um, good, uh, but why, why are you, why are you in it? What is the thing that motivates you to continue to get up and do your job and do it as well as you both do? Um, and still keep plodding along because, and we'll talk about it, we've been in a challenging time, especially the most of this year, or at least the last four or five months. Uh, so I'm gonna start with Jess. What is it that continues to motivate you? What is your why behind what you do? You know, the relationships that I'm able to connect with in this business is so amazing. It's like a lifetime of family. And I can't tell you how much it means to me to be able to connect with a family and be able to be that that um, instrument for them to to make their home buying, you know, dreams come true in a sense, you know, 
And, you know, as far as like what keeps me going, it's the more successful that I am, the more I can give back to other people. So I've been able to give back to people where, you know, when I was in my 20s, there's so many people that helped me, you know, financially, um, professionally, personally, that put me into a spot where I am who I am because of them. Um, bosses I've had along the way. I mean, it just, there's so many people. So, you know, I'm at a spot now where the more successful I am, the more I can give back to others and knowledge and money and, you know, being able to help the community and stuff. But that's where you really truly are living. Do you know? Yes. So it's kind of like, this has been um, a, a source for me to to be able to, to, to do that. Um, and I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be in this spot again and through the crash that we went through it was so traumatizing back then um but to be able to circle back and do a complete you know 180 with with this business it's been just an incredible journey for sure i love it all right how about you jen what's your why what, what motivates you i kind of have two whys i think one is i have teenagers um 15 and 16 almost 17 years old and they are watching. They are watching me. They're watching mom. Um, I may or may not take them on showings with me from time to time, but they're watching. <laughs> and they, they, you know, and, and as they've gotten older and I realize that, you know, like I said, they are watching, it's they, they've become a huge why. And like I need to continue to be able to, to provide for them. And I want them to see, I want to be a good role model for them. I want them to see success because, and I want them to, you know, even if it's not in real estate, I want them to follow in, in my footsteps and have something of their own, a business of their own at some point. So I want them to look up to me. Um, my uh, other one would be helping, you know, kind of what I said in the beginning with is helping families buy a home. I mean, it's just, you know, those 30 days from contract to close is stressful. You're a therapist, you're, you know, an advisor. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you get to celebrate with them and, and, and it made all of that, you know, kind of go away. And it's just the appreciation that you get from the clients at the end um, just makes all of that stress worth it. And it makes you excited to go on to the next one. And then, you know, also the, the mentoring that I get to do, you know, um, Anthony, the broker of the property pros has given me an amazing opportunity here in Tampa to be the branch manager and be able to mentor agents. Um, I know what it was like coming, you know, being new in, in the game and, and kind of throwing my getting thrown into, you know, learning. So I just being able to have an agent that's been licensed a month and has already had her first closing is so is, is, is almost as, I mean, it's actually is as good as turning over the keys to a first time home buyer. So I want to, you know, I want to keep, keep doing that and keep going and just keep that joy. That's awesome. It is, it's, I do too. I, that is awesome. I think we are, we want, we love that feeling of joy when you can get a homeowner into a home or mm -hmm. some on your side also, uh, that house is sold and they're moving on to whatever their next chapter is. Uh, I think people that um, come into it just for the money are always going to be miserable. Uh, it's not that the money's not good, but I think that the money is secondary to that feeling you guys are talking about of helping and really um, putting some joy into people's lives. What do you think separates you? You know, we're all, there's so many of all of us, right? There's tons of loan officers. Oh, that's right. We're, we're opposite. There's tons of loan officers. <laughs> um, but I always like to think that I'm different and I do things differently and that's what sets me apart. So um, be a little bravada and tell me uh, what you do differently, what you feel is your strongest characteristic as far as what separates you from the crowd. And I'll start with you, Jen. Um, I would say probably my, my saying is save the client, not the deal. So my biggest thing is what is best for the client? There's there's always going to be a deal, but there's not always going to be that client. So putting the client first, making sure that they are happy. If they want that house that's only paying 1% commission, we're going to buy that house that's only paying 1% commission. You know, if they, 
if they need to wait 30 days, we're going to wait 30 days. I'm not going to, you know, just push them under the rug because they're blowing me off because they want to wait 30 days. So I always make sure that I, I focus on the client, put the client first, no matter what it takes to get them to the closing table, you know, and make them happy because those are the clients that are going to generate more clients for you. Great. I love it. Absolutely. How about you, Jess? It's about the experience. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is from Maya, uh, Maya Angelou, where she says, people do not remember, you know, what you said, or, you know, um, they, and I don't have this quote, I remember it exactly, so excuse me, but they remember how you made them feel, right? Yes. And I just, at the end of the day, um, I tried to have people understand how I feel. You know, I'm very expressive, Jen will tell you, I wear my face, my sleeve, every, everybody knows how I feel um, at, at, in the feeling that I have. But I want people to honestly connect and understand how invested I am in their transaction. And that comes from only by giving them a thing. You know, when I meet with them, they get a face-to-face -face Zoom. They, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking through the, the entire reason why they're buying a home, finding out about them, where are they from, who are, you know, where do they work, what do they like to do? Um, it's all, all, not just going through a list of profile questions. I honestly care about what kind of, what they're doing and who they are. Um, I mean, every single one of my clients right now, like when they get an underwriting approval, they get a box of chocolates. I mean, I literally want them to feel special. I want them to remember the entire experience, not the transaction. Because at the end of the day, this is the biggest investment they'll ever make. And why not make them feel special? Why not have them, you know, have an experience? Because at the end of the day, when they go buy their next or when they go refi to be in a lower interest rate, who do I call? Me. So then I can get back to my real estate agents. I mean, that's what this all is all about. This is about creating a connection to welcome them into a family for the long term. So that's what makes I me love, I love that. It's about the relationship, the, the experience. And I think we've all been on the other side of with a, on a transaction where we f actually feel badly for the people who are having to deal with the other people on the other side of the transaction. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. just because you can make money and it's a good market doesn't mean it brings in all the nice people. And so it's it can be challenging. And I sometimes feel sorry. I see uh, people go through things. And I think if their realtor or lender just cared a little more, um, mm -hmm. perhaps they would have, be having a better experience. But you guys are spot on. It's about connection and it's about the the actual relationship it's it doesn't have to be a transactional only business uh, exactly. so, all right so when i say the word hero what's the first thing that comes to your mind jess who spot um <laughs> honestly the first uh person that comes to my mind is uh my significant other david Lindsay. he's um I'm not gonna get emotional. No, uh, we've been together. Like, we've been we've been together for ten years, and um, I would have to say that he is um, he has taken me, um, you know, as a banker, you know, um, and taught me how to literally budget. Um, he's taught me everything about credit. He taught me, you know, literally just how to be a better and uh, better in sales. But he is giving me like every single thing that I could ever ask for um, in my family too. And I just feel like he is definitely the best thing that ever happened to me. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. How about you, Jen? That's me. Let me uh, gather myself here, Jess. <laughs> um, you know, I kind as cliche as it is, I, I would have to go with my, my mom only because as I mentioned earlier, she's always had some sort of business that she's owned and no matter what it was even if i didn't know a lick about what it was doing i was involved in that business most of them i actually ran the business and again not necessarily knowing what i'm doing but she threw me to the fire taught me what i needed to know 
And I think if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have the, the, the mentality that I have now to, to have my own. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, if, if everybody comes up, I'm never quite sure on that because some people will say they're a sports hero. Lots and lots of people obviously say their parents or their significant other. Most of the time, somebody cries. So it's um, <laughs> it's just it's an emotional thing. Why? Because we don't say it out loud to other people a lot. And so when you're saying those words and you realize you're saying them out loud, not to your person, but to the world, um, it can be kind of jarring, but in a good way. It's, it's okay. jarring in a good way. So you, you mentioned men mentorship earlier, Jen, I think, or it could have been Jess. Both of you are mentor mentors for sure. What are some of the things that, that you see the new agents that are coming in or new loan officers coming in that you can give them some recommendations on some things they could do better? Mistakes that maybe you made in the beginning that you don't want them to have to make now. Well, we consider we only have an hour show here. <laughs> um, you're gonna, you're, they're gonna make mistakes. It's just, it is what it is. It doesn't matter how amazing your brokerage is and how amazing your training is. You are gonna make a mistake. Um, the biggest thing is how you deal with that mistake and what you do afterwards. Um, you know, I recommend agents when you're new coming in. The school is going to teach you how not to get in trouble. They're not going to teach you what you need to do to sell a house. Um, you really need to partner up with somebody who is experienced and not worry about that it's going to take 20, 30, 40, 50% of your commission because you need that that support and that help in the beginning and it's going to be worth every penny you you give you know you give away to get that experience i mean i gave up 50 percent of my commission for well over a year and i don't regret it at all i love it how about you jess you know um when i got back into the business after being gone years um it was a little intimidating, I mean, because I had never done a purchase in my life. Um, you know, back in the day, it was refis, didn't know to save my life. I didn't know to talk to a realtor, didn't have any contacts at all. And, you know, I just dug in. Every night, you have to go to sleep and think of one more thing that you're not doing to go your business do that the next day. I mean, that's basically what I did. It was like building, 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 um, which I'm still doing. You never stop evolving. You always are building on yourself from the day before. And I feel like, you know, you can't go into the, these um, industries, you know, real estate uh, lending and go into it like it's a, you know, a part time job. Like, oh, you know, money, but I'm only working four hours a week or like you have to grind. And I feel like everybody knows from my Facebook or, you know, even if you've ever done business with me. It is about the grind. Um, you can't, you know, pretend or, you know, uh, oh, I only, you know, only um, answer my phones, you know, nine to five, Monday through Friday, but I'm, I'm not available on the weekends. Listen, at the end of the day, if you are trying to build your business, then you need to hustle. And if you don't want to do that, don't, you know, want a million dollar income and then you work a part time job. Like, that's not how this works. So, I mean, I feel like you just need to make sure that you're prepared for the for the grind and um, and be, be ask questions and mm -hmm. um, just just get out there and do anything you can possibly do to connect to, to as many people as possible and be selective. You know, I think um, I don't know. You know, I well, I tell people all the time, I suppose in the first six months to a year, it is like the hazing process mm -hmm. in this industry, okay? And I say that, you know, it's like you will go through so many, you know, dead conversations. You'll talk to anybody that has a pulse. You'll waste all kinds of time because you are so hungry, but that's okay. It's okay. Don't ever lose the hunger, but use those conversations and those go nowhere clients as experience right and it's just part of the it's part of the grind because eventually you're going to get good at those conversations and be like oh okay well this is how i would talk to a top producing agent or 
this is how I will go after an affluent client. Um, you know, be selective and I don't know, things will just happen. I mean, I've seen it in my business, Jen, you've seen it in yours. Um, that's what it is. I, I think you're absolutely right. I feel like uh, people look at where you all are or might look at where I'm at as far as the show goes and they think, well, it's, it must be easy. Well, we, we make it look easy because we've been through the trials. We've put the grind in, we continue to grind. Mm -hmm. And so you're honing your craft. And a lot of, um, I found a lot of people think it's a, almost like a get rich quick scheme. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a real estate agent. I'm gonna make my first million in the first three months. And it yeah. it's not that it can't be done. It's just, you have to set realistic um, expectations. And I think you have to do the grind. You have to put the work in. When I opened my insurance agencies back in the nineties, um, I was working, it felt like 24 seven, but that's what you had mm -hmm. to do. I mean, you're a business right. owner, you're an entrepreneur. This is your business. What a fantastic opportunity that it's even out there for you to be able to do. Uh, but you're right about putting the work in. So I want to ask, you mentioned something about, um, somebody mentioned something about self-care or um, what gets you through. I can tell you, I, I want to ask about your day. So I start my day uh, with gratitude. Like I say, five things I'm thankful for. Even if I'm, I'm in a really not wanting to do that mode, I have to say, all right, I'm thankful I'm awake. Uh, but what do you, that sets the tone for my day if I start with gratitude. So I found that's successful for me. That's something that helps keep me kind of balanced or in line with where I should be heading. Uh, what do you all do? What's something that you do routine that is a positive that you can share with the world? Uh, Jen? Um, I say each morning before I actually get out of bed, you know, I'll set my alarm a little bit earlier than what I actually need to get up for and reflect on the day before and kind of think about what I could have done better. Did something happen during that day that went wrong? What did, how did I react to it? What can I do today to maybe make that situation better if it was a bad situation? Or how can I, if it was a good situation, what, can, what did I do to get to that good point and how can I do it again? So I, I, just, I do a lot of self-reflecting um, and I think it just kind of makes me grow as a person. And then, you know, being able to reflect on what I've done wrong as well as what I did right. Awesome. How about you, Jess? Well, um, I take my Bella, my Bichon Poodle out for a walk. And so that's a routine now. Um, but David and I, uh, what we do is we, um, we reflect on the business, you know, what I have going forward. Um, he gives me ideas on like things I can, you know, do as far as maximizing the business. He's very analytical. So, um, being that I'm like, you know, all over the place squirrel, he keeps me in line. So it's a good partnership. Um, even though he doesn't work for freedom, <laughs> he's in the background, uh, doing his thing as far as, uh, business coaching and, and, and what's cool is, Elaborate on different things, you know, as far as conversations, you know, how to handle different things. So um, I think, you know, having that morning like debrief and like making sure that, you know, I'm kind of just setting the tone for the day and I'm like, OK, I got this, this and this. Um, it really, really makes a difference because I am a squirrel. Um, it, it keeps me, <laughs> me kind too. of, yeah, it keeps me focused um, in my pathway to like what I need to like do. So. I think we all have to have something, right? There's gotta be something. I, I love that you guys knew what your routine is and that you continue to try to do it. And when people say that, or people will reach out later and say, well, I could never do that. Look guys, there are days where I'm sure I forget. Um, I try not to, that you're, it's never gonna be a perfect scenario. So I just encourage people to find something that's going to start their day off uh, on the right foot. I used to grab my phone and that's the first thing I'd look at and immediately the stress would kick in. Yeah. Um, and I, tr I think that's not a good way to wake up. I think a better way is if it's, if you're not saying things you're grateful for, then at least have something where you meditate or pray or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. to kind of get your mind going, like uh, Jen said earlier to kind of uh, get focused and figure out and reflect. So 
Great. All right. Community. I want to talk about that because uh, you guys, I know you are community oriented people, um, <clears throat> very involved. Why, why is community important? Why is getting involved and giving back to the community important to you, Jess? Um, because community is given back to, to me. Um, I think, you know, as a kid, I was, you know, my mom was a single mom, whatever. And, you know, we didn't have a lot. And I feel like, you know, when you have teachers in your life that have given back to you, I mean, I had teachers that were like my surrogate moms in a, in a sense. Right. Um, and, and they were like there for me as far as teaching me things that, you know, my mom was too busy to teach me, you know what I mean? So I think that um, at the end of the day, when I can give back to like a school, um, I actually do this um, where I, well, I haven't done it since the creation, obviously, but um, reading to um, preschool children, um, you know, and enhancing like the literacy behind, uh, behind that. And uh, it's like amazing when you can actually give a book to a child and have him say that that's his third book on his bookshelf and know that, you know, I had so many books as a kid that I couldn't even count them all, but this kid knew that this was his third book. Um, that, that, that is, it, it's, it's really amazing you know, to be able to do. Love that. How about you, Jen? I mean, community, community is, is everything. I'm born and raised here in Tampa. Um, you know, I joke around. I'm like, this is my city, you know, because that's how I feel. Not that I feel I own the city at by any means, but this is me. This is where I grew up. This is everything. And now that I've I am getting to a, a position to where I can give back kind of what Jess said, give back to those who gave to me. And it's not necessary that I'm giving to the people that physically gave to me, but now I'm repaying it and giving it to the people who now need it, who are maybe in a position that I was in back then. So, um, I mean, I just think in the community is going to, the more you give to your community, the more you're going to, you're going to get from it. And your, your community is going to stand beside you just as you, you know, we stand beside our community. So. Love it. I think it's so important. You know, we're, we're all community oriented people. I think people underestimate the value of that, not just for personal satisfaction. You're, you're helping people, you feel good helping the community, but it's so good for your business profile to be involved in the community. And I think people don't understand the importance of that. Um, the majority of my connections uh, ha are because I have been so involved in the community for so long. And it just yeah. snowballs. Like you guys were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, or somebody made, made it, maybe it was Anthony made a comment, clients refer clients well mm -hmm. if you're doing business in the community that you're going to get referrals from that so uh we love to do it and that's not why we do it but i think it, people make a mistake if they don't make it part of their business plan so i want to and talk a little bit one ahead. of the reasons sorry one, it's one of the reasons why jess and i started this show was to, mm -hmm. to to help bring the community together not just in our our topics but we have a the small business spotlight obviously we didn't do it this week because it was a little different show but we do a small business spotlight and we bring on a, a, some a member of the community who owns a business and give them an opportunity to you know to tell what they do so it's just kind of our way of, of giving back to them and it's such a great way so you answered the question that was actually going to be my next question oh, so sorry. i was just going to say so tell me about welcome to java with jen and jess um so when you focus on the businesses what is the feeling that the person on the other end gives you i mean are they saying well how much do i owe you or how much do i uh, because you're giving people an opportunity to showcase their business especially in this time it's such a big thing to be able to give back but i'm curious to see what some of your businesses might have said can i take that one Jen? Yeah, go ahead. so this is this is kind of like amazing and 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 um so my office okay is at armature works right and there's like you know a ton of us here and we showcased you know uh move.com a moving company um kj newman owns the company and you know we just met because we had what he calls it fishbowl we had a glass glass across from each other and we just started connecting you know first it was a smile a wave and then it was an introduction 
And then we just started talking and learning about each other's businesses. And then after the show, it's like now, you know, we're co-marketing, you know, we're going to grow each other's businesses. He knows that if he has any other, you know, being moved out into a, a home or they're looking to buy it, my information is going to be there. So, I mean, literally this is huge. Right. And it, it, it started with a hello. That's it. Um, but after we showcased his business, I mean, this, I mean, we're, we're partners and then, and we're here for each other. And it's just, it creates this like, um, camaraderie partnership and advocacy for each other's business. Great. You too, Jen. Uh, it's, I noticed a lot of them, just them being asked to do it. It's like, wow, like no, nobody's done this for, for me before. This is, you know, I appreciate it. And like you said, no, they don't, you know, they don't say, what do I owe you? But you can tell with their look that they're thinking it, you know, what am yeah. I going to do in return? But, you know, we make it very clear. This is just, we just want to give you your, your five minutes of fame, you know, not that we're that big yet, but no, you're celebrities. <laughs> and, and showcase themselves. And it's just, they are very, very grateful for it. And again, it kind of goes with the, you know, with our helping families get into a home, seeing how grateful they are. And it's like, thank you so much. Can I, can I give you a cupcake for this? You know, and it's like, oh, no, not yeah. at all. Like, you know, we just, we love you. So we want everybody else to love you as well. So important. I love that you spotlight uh small businesses i just think it's so critical we need to as our businesses are positive right now and growing and still healthy um giving back to those businesses that might not be in that same position mm -hmm. is really critical because there's so many people hurting when we did we started doing eight or nine shows a day just to get the restaurant um mm -hmm. information out there when COVID first shut everything down and it's just, I am now very good friends with those people. Um, we can get business from those people. And those. it was really just because I wanted to give back. And so what you guys are doing, big kudos. I want to talk about the business. I would be remiss if I did not at least ask about the market, talk about real estate, uh, talk about mortgages a little bit. So let's start with you, Jess. Tell me what you're feeling. What's your... What's the temperature out there as far as the market goes? You know, Florida has not shut back down all the way, uh, at least most of it. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, rates are incredibly low. Um, you know, business is is hot. Um, the market is very, very good right now. I think in general, we're seeing um, obviously you know low inventory across many regions uh because it's so um you know we are just trying to stir up the market obviously everyone knows mortgages uh real estate stimulate so um i think the fed is doing a really good job in keeping those uh rates as low as possible so that continues um so we're just riding the wave right now and you know with i think what stands out more than anything is that we have an amazing home team that is so supportive and you know he there's in, within our team that just make it where our you know us as loan officers we don't have to worry about just being left on an island you know we don't have to worry about oh my gosh do we have somebody that's there for us and, and you know for marketing um to get our brand out there uh, do we have operations, you know, that's willing to just work late, answer their cell phones, not just their direct lines to their office line, but we're talking, um, we have our entire operational staff working from their homes, uh, you know, $10 billion funded. I mean, this is like crazy, you know, and we're a national lender. We service all of our loans. I'm just happy to be a part of this team. I mean, I can call boss's boss. Like there's no to the resources that we have here. And uh, I'm just happy to be here. I love it. Well, you know, I concur completely with that. <laughs> I'm part of the same team. Um, how about you, Jen? Uh, like Jess said, the market, I mean, it's crazy. Um, we definitely need inventory. So if anyone's thinking of selling, um, but <laughs> definitely, definitely low on inventory. 
Um, still seeing homes going into multiple, multiple offers, some, you know, five, six and, and above even, on a, you know, the homes that are priced appropriately. Um, this, the virus just, it brought buyers out of the woodwork, you know, and I don't know if people were just sitting at home and like, let's go buy a house today. You know, we have nothing else to do. I don't know, but um, it has, we, as a brokerage, as a whole, we had a better um, April and May than we did last April and May. So uh, the market is thriving. It really is. I mean, it's a blessing for everybody in the industry right now. Um, so now, but it, it's definitely a good time to buy if you are in the market. I agree. I feel like um, the hesitancy, of course, was, will I be furloughed? Will I not be furloughed? Mm -hmm. Um, if you hadn't been furloughed yet and there was a possibility to be laid off. So there are people that are in that boat, but I find the market to be incredibly healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like people are still really wanting to engage. I definitely know inventory is low. Uh, it's just a challenge, but uh, people are wanting to continue to try to get back to some sort of normalcy. And it was awesome that we were able to help so many families um, even during COVID and continue to do so. Um, last question, I tr it's just gonna throw it at you. Um, what, what, if, what book or movie? I chose book last time and the person told me they didn't read. So I correct that now. Um, what book or movie uh, makes you cry? Oh. I'll start with you, Jess. Why, you, you put me on the hot seat, oh my gosh. You can get, you'll, you'll pay me back later, I'm sure. Oh my God. Okay, so what movie or book makes me cry? Yeah. Um, Don't take mine. You know, you know what's funny, like, really funny about that is I cry at Publix commercials. I mean, I don't know if anyone out there does that, but Thank like you. literally Publix makes me cry. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I would say that, uh, well, Publix definitely, but um, movies or books, I mean, I've never read a book that makes me cry um, other than I, I feel like I've read scripture out of the Bible and I feel like that has made me emotional only because I just, I'm a Christian and I believe in God. And, That's a great answer. You know, I, I feel like, you know, um, oh, you know what? Passion of the Christ. I never, oh my, I couldn't sit still for, for two seconds and I was like sobbing. So I would say that was the only movie that like I really got heart wrenched or whatever, but um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's perfect. The public's in God. <laughs> At least you had something. That's good. I really made the last <laughs> uh, crazy. How about you, Jen? So I'm going to be that I don't read person um, unless it's, you know, how to, how to I sell. I don't really to. either, so it's <laughs> fine. I just, <laughs> um, uh, I don't cry a lot either. <laughs> Gee, that's a true statement, by the way. I've had people answer that. that. That's why it's wide open. I, you know, there there are certain certain people out there in certain situations that can get me emotional. Um, I, I mean, I would have to, you know, God, my my first movie that came to mind was The Notebook. Of course, um, I mean, you know, the, I do love a good. Actually, probably the number one answer oh, is I'm sure. The Notebook. I'm sure. um, I don't know I how you can watch that movie right? and not cry. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> All right, you guys are a joy. We're we're at our time. I don't know if you have any parting words of wisdom or if you're taking over from here. Uh, you both are amazing. What great hearts. That's what you're doing in the community. And I think it's, um, I think getting out there and putting yourselves out, being authentic and vulnerable and wanting to promote and help other people is just such a big deal. So you really need to know how much of a big deal it actually is. So I'm very honored to have been part of the show today. Well, we love you, Chad. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Ted. We, we are we're honored to have you um, not only on the show, but but interviewing us on our show. So we greatly appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank you guys so much. For Thank all you, you so much. All right. Well, Jess, until uh, next week, we thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or any ideas for the shows, we are always um, – Love to hear from you. Uh, if you are a small business and would like to be featured on the show, uh, please send either one of us an email or reach out to us on Facebook. Uh, we will be happy to do so. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Again.